11 kilometers beneath the Pacific surface, lies a place that shouldn't sustain life. A realm where pressure would crush your bones to powder, dissolve shells like they never existed, and freeze the chemistry of life itself. Scientists once declared it dead, impossible, a sterile void. Then, in 1960, something moved in that crushing darkness. Life, not just clinging to existence, but thriving. Creatures that evolved in Earth's most hostile environment and could survive nowhere else. Everything we know about this alien world comes from fragments, mangled specimens hauled up by robots, bizarre creatures occasionally snagged by fishing nets, twisted carcasses washed onto beaches. Removed from their high-pressure home, they collapse, distort, sometimes liquefy entirely. We're left guessing what they really look like the deep ocean remains our planet's final frontier, more mysterious than Mars, more unexplored than the moon. Today, we're diving into the deepest place on our planet, the Mariana Trench. Picture 1,876. HMS Challenger, exhausted crew, four brutal years surveying the ocean floor. They'd taken hundreds of soundings, backbreaking work, lowering lead weights on rope, hauling up every freezing, waterlogged meter by hand. The pattern was monotonous, mud and sediment, three to four kilometers down, every time. Then came that day, empty Pacific, 2,000 kilometers east of the Philippines. Another measurement, the weight didn't stop at three kilometers, not four, not five. Imagine their growing dread, rope after rope, plunging deeper beneath their fragile wooden ship. These sailors lived by superstitions, believed in legends of colossal creatures erupting from the depths, tentacles crushing entire vessels, dragging them into the abyss. In those days, those fears weren't irrational. They felt real. Eight kilometers. The weight finally hit bottom they discovered the Mariana Trench, sail slightly west, and they would have found something even more staggering. Challenger Deep, 11 kilometers to the sea floor, drop Mount Everest in, and its peak would vanish two kilometers below the surface. The trench stretches 2,500 kilometers, a massive curved scar, 70 kilometers wide. Challenger Deep alone, could swallow five Grand Canyons. The Mariana Trench belongs to a ring of geological violence circling the Pacific, the Ring of Fire. This 40,000 kilometer fracture zone generates 90% of Earth's earthquakes. Understanding this geological marvel requires looking at Earth's surface differently. Continents aren't just land above water. They're ancient slabs of crust, billions of years old, floating on molten rock. Ocean crust is younger, thinner, constantly being created and destroyed. 200 million years ago, all continents were fused into one supercontinent, Pangaea. Since then, they've been drifting apart. The Atlantic widens as the Americas move from Europe and Africa. New ocean floor forms continuously down the Atlantic's center driven by thermal currents in the magma below, pushing continents apart. But if the Americas drift westward, they must approach Asia, shrinking the Pacific. The same forces creating Atlantic sea floor operate in the Pacific, generating new oceanic crust that flows outward like a conveyor belt. Where does all this sea floor go? Around the Pacific's rim, this outward flowing crust collides with surrounding continents. It's forced downward, diving beneath them, returning to the magma from which it formed. Subduction, Earth's largest recycling operation. This colossal destruction zone generates the ring of fires, earthquakes, and volcanoes. As seafloor plunges into magma, portions melt and rise, bursting through as volcanoes. The Pacific plate feeding into our trench 
is 170 million years old, Earth's oldest oceanic crust. At the Pacific's western edge, it meets the younger, lighter Philippine plate, which simply rides over it, forcing it down, bending solid rock several kilometers thick. The forces involved transcend imagination. This junction creates the Mariana Trench. This destruction zone spawns geological marvels. Gigantic mud volcanoes pumping hydrogen into Pacific waters, one stretching 50 kilometers wide. Volcanoes erupting liquid carbon dioxide. Craters filled with molten sulfur, found only here and on Jupiter's moon 10. But we're going deeper, past these volcanic wonders, into the trench itself, into Challenger Deep. At 10,935 meters, the Mariana Trench isn't unique. Other Pacific trenches reach similar depths. But the challenges of exploring it are extraordinary. Pressure dominates everything. Swim to a pool's bottom and feel it in your ears. At three meters, it's uncomfortable. At 11 kilometers, over a thousand times surface pressure, equivalent to balancing a car on your thumbnail. It destroys most living cells. It obliterates equipment. In 2014, the unmanned explorer Nereus imploded during a dive into the Kermadec Trench, completely destroyed. Military submarines dive safely only to about 1,500 meters. Reaching the Mariana Trench's bottom demands extraordinary engineering. Astonishingly, two people did it in 1960. Don Walsh and Jacques Picard descended in Trieste, a tiny pressure sphere suspended beneath a buoyancy tank. Nine kilometers down, a thunderous bang. They scanned for damage, saw nothing, kept going. What they missed was a crack in a critical plexiglass window, one of the components preventing implosion. They were at Trieste's absolute limit, yet they pressed on. Three more kilometers, five hours to reach bottom. Their view, two tiny viewing ports, 50 millimeters in diameter, illuminating a small circle of pitch black sea floor. Their arrival stirred sediment, obscuring everything. Then they witnessed life. What they thought was a flatfish, probably a sea cucumber, one of few species known at this depth. 20 minutes, then a three hour ascent so dangerous that no one attempted it again for 50 years. During that time, 7,000 people summited Everest. 12 walked on the moon. The next manned descent came in 2012. James Cameron solo in Deep Sea Challenger. Since then, over 20 dives. More people have now visited Challenger Deep than have traveled to the moon. In 2021, Hamish Harding completed the longest, deepest dive. Two years later, he died when the Titan submersible imploded, exploring the Titanic wreck at only 3,800 meters. The dangers are real, always, above the surface. Nothing, empty ocean, no land for 300 kilometers. Descending, you first notice the quiet, the calm. Meters down, you're beneath the waves buffeting. We're in the epipelagic zone, the sunlit surface layer forming only 2 to 3% of the oceans, but supporting life everywhere. Here, light powers photosynthesis. Phytoplankton here produce half the oxygen we breathe. This is where the ocean food web begins. Phytoplankton feed zooplankton. Zooplankton feed fish, jellyfish, whales. Bigger fish eat smaller ones, sharks eat bigger fish. It starts here. Water absorbs light. Descending deeper, it darkens, turns blue. In clear Pacific waters, the epipelagic zone extends to 200 meters. Then we enter the twilight zone. Light persists, but insufficient for photosynthesis. Water turns colder. As light fades, we see the first flashes of bioluminescence, light produced by marine life. This region teams with life. The twilight zone's fish biomass may equal the rest of the ocean combined. 
possibly more. Earth's most abundant vertebrate lives here. The bristlemouth, a small fish with spiny teeth, seven centimeters long, but possibly quadrillions of them exist, feeding on zooplankton. Descending further, the last surface light vanishes, complete darkness, except bioluminescence truly dominates here. Eerie, alien blue light, the color traveling farthest through water, helps species find mates, hunt, kill. One kilometer down, the midnight zone, covering over half Earth's surface. Temperature, four degrees Celsius. Pressure, dangerous and climbing. Far below any diving depth, approaching nuclear submarine limits. Our camera lights reveal a snowstorm of microorganisms. Much activity here, at least in upper levels. Going deeper, strange creatures appear. Some have enormous eyes, enabling sight in what seems total darkness to us. The owlfish uses faint light to prey on shrimp and jellies. Barrel eyes have strange upward pointing eyes to hunt from below their prey, living in pitch darkness as far down as 2,500 meters. Others nearly abandon sight entirely, like the small-eyed snipe eel. Most species here use pressure sensors detecting movement. Even completely blind, this enables hunting and killing. Many animals use light to attract prey. The anglerfish dangles a small glowing lure. Anything approaching becomes dinner as massive spine-filled jaws snap shut. Earth's largest eyes belong to the giant squid. The largest observed measured 13 meters long but there's no reason they don't grow bigger, perhaps much bigger. Species tend to grow larger in deeper water, deep sea gigantism. The bigger you are, the less likely you're eaten, and you can eat bigger prey as food becomes scarce. Larger size suits an existence where meals become rare. The bigger you are, the longer you survive without eating. The chimera, ghost shark, has dead-looking eyes wing-like fins, and an abnormally large head. Permanent teeth crush even the toughest crustaceans. The pelican eel, massive jaws, expanding stomach, capable of swallowing prey larger than itself. Beyond the midnight zone lies the ocean's deepest waters, the Hadal Zone, named after Hades, god of the underworld. Dark, immense pressure, temperature near freezing, Cold currents flow from Antarctica through these trenches, part of a global system crucial for Earth's weather and climate. For life adapted here, this constant cold, pressurized water is vital, providing more oxygen where every advantage means survival. Even the Mariana Trench's shallow parts are eight kilometers deep. The seafloor, fine silt, easily distributed by currents, churned by detritus feeders, constantly searching for food. More life exists here than in open water. Our lights pick out sprawling mats of microbial ooze on rock formations rising above the silt. These microorganisms use dissolved hydrogen sulfide from volcanic activity to power chemosynthesis, harnessing energy from chemical reactions instead of sunlight. Nowhere near as effective as photosynthesis, but in these dark waters, you exploit anything available. Nature's rule, where there's potential, it will be utilized. These microbes create life from rocks in this barren place. They themselves become food. The cycle of life begins, even here. The only other food, scarce organic matter drifting from above. After falling through eight kilometers, passing marine life constantly scavenging, very little reaches this far. Main scavengers, giant amphipods, growing over 30 centimeters, giants compared to typical millimeter long amphipods. Translucent sea pigs, a type of sea cucumber with long antenna-like projections, scavenge the sea floor, seeking anything nutritious. They're attracted to carcasses falling into these depths appearing in large numbers for those rare feasts. 
Here we find Mariana snailfish and cusk eels, the deepest known fish on Earth. Known is crucial. There's so much we don't know. Other fish might live in these waters or deeper, but we haven't discovered them. Finding anything is more luck than design. The abyss keeps its secrets jealously. But every dive, every discovery reveals that life finds a way. Even here, in Earth's most extreme environment, in crushing darkness, 11 kilometers below the waves. The Mariana Trench reminds us our planet still holds mysteries. That exploration isn't finished. That the final frontier isn't in space. It's right here beneath the ocean's surface, waiting in the darkness, waiting to reveal its wonders.